Well, hey, thanks again for hanging out with us today. If you are watching us on Facebook right now, do us a favor, click the share button. Let your friends and family know what God is doing here. And we would love to really just be a part of their lives as well. We uh, just celebrated yesterday something we call I Love My City, where we were serving in practical ways in different opportunities all across our communities. And I was able to participate in free oil changes for single moms. It was so much fun. So shout out to everybody who was able to help us serve and participate in our service project through I Love My City yesterday. We are right now in what is my favorite weekend. It's our legacy weekend. And if you've been hanging out with us online over the last few weeks or in a community group, you, you kind of already know. And if you haven't, if you're newer, we're so glad that you're here. We really are thrilled that you would take some time to hang out with us. And we're going to share a little bit more about what our legacy weekend is all about. But ultimately, we have a vision here at Ethos. That every single person would know God. We want people to personally know who Jesus is. We've kind of got a big vision. We want everybody in all of Central Ohio to know who Jesus is. We're taking personal responsibility to ensure that that actually takes place, that they would personally have a relationship with Jesus. Then we want to help people find freedom. We believe that the best way to find freedom is to settle your past in healthy, life-giving, authentic relationships within your presence. We want to create those opportunities. And then third, we want to help people discover their purpose. Two most important days in an individual's life is the day they were born and the day that they figure out, why was I born? And then lastly, we want to make a difference. Come on, like we, we're all about making a difference. And, and that's what this particular series that we've been in called It Is That Deep. That's what it's all about. In fact, more specifically, that's what our Legacy Weekend is all about. That's what our Legacy Offering that we're, we're receiving today, where 100% of what comes in goes back out to several organizations that we'll reference here in a moment. But it's all in an effort to really recognize that there's more to this life than this life. And we want to make a difference in the short period of time that we've got while, while we're here. So this is a little bit of a different message today. Uh, but I want to share with you from a talk entitled Legacy People. All right, Legacy People. And if you'll allow me to, I want to encourage us to lean into becoming personally a legacy individual. Like as a, as a father, I want to lead my family to become a legacy family. As a husband, I want to lead my wife to become a legacy wife. If you're a student, you want to lead your campus in a, in a, in a, with kind of a legacy mindset. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. Let's pray real quick before we go any further. Father, we thank you for these moments that we have to gather together wherever we may find ourselves. And Father, we are so grateful for your love in our lives. And we continue just to declare your peace over our nation, over this political season, over everything that may be going on, even in our own personal lives that are unrelated to what's going on in our world. God, we just, we thank you that you are good, that you love us, that you have your best in store for us. It's your peace, your love, your joy, your grace, your goodness, your kindness, your faithfulness. And God, we're so grateful for it. God, we continue to ask that you would bring a national championship to your Ohio State Buckeyes in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, I love fall. I don't know about you. I love fall. I've got some friends in the room. Do y'all love fall? Like fall is actually unquestionably my favorite season of the year. Now, I don't necessarily enjoy what's going to come after fall. Like I don't really like winter a whole lot, but I do love fall itself. I've just embraced the season. I love it. In, in fact, I, I, love I love what comes with fall. I love football. Uh, I love the colors changing. I love the, I love the weather. I'm kind of like, I even kind of like the rain. Like, I don't know about you, but like I, I thoroughly enjoy like a Saturday afternoon when it's raining outside. It gives me full excuse to be lazy inside and just watch college football all day long. Like, I enjoy it. In fact, one of the things I really especially love about fall is I like pumpkin patches. I don't know if I like to admit that, but I do actually like them. And, and my kids love them. More specifically, Judah our son, who gives me a plethora of stories and sermon illustrations, he, he loves the mazes at Pumpkin Patches, like the maze maze, you know, like the corn maze. And so he loves those, and, and I love walking him through those because he's so determined to discover how to get through them all by himself. He doesn't want help. He doesn't want direction. He just wants to kind of go on his own, and it reminds me a little bit of my own personal stupidity, like, but... But he's, he's, he's so awesome, and he just kind of barrels through. And when he can't figure out his way out, 
he just starts to walk through the corn itself. Like, he just gives up entirely on the maze and just starts going through the corn. Which I'm like, Judah, no, no, you can't, you can't do that. But he, he, he kind of loses vision. And as a result, he kind of just goes astray, which is actually in the Scriptures. Like, that's not a surprise that that would take place in Judah's personal life because it actually happens in our lives. It's actually a scriptural, biblical thing. Solomon says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, he grew up in church. You're, you're familiar with this. But where there's no vision, the people, they're unrestrained. In other words, they just kind of wander around. They look here. They look there. They, they kind of dabble at, at this church and they kind of dabble at that church. They kind of go from this career to that career. They, just, they don't really have a clear vision for their lives, which is something that Jesus, through His Holy Spirit, really wants you to have. Like he wants you to discover your individual unique purpose for your life. But, but when we don't have that, we tend to just kind of wander. You know, during 2020, the year in which we find ourselves, it, the, the vision of ethos has never changed. But at times, to be honest, uh, we've struggled to identify the strategy necessary to accomplish the vision consistently. It hasn't always been easy, as I'm sure it hasn't been easy in your career, as I'm sure it hasn't been easy even in your home with your children's education or your own personal education, because everything around us has been changing so rapidly. And sometime around last April, it was about middle, middle of April, when I was just going through like my one-year Bible, I read through the Bible all the way through every time, every year, and as I'm going through that, I'm, I'm in the book of Isaiah, and I'm, and I'm reading this in early in the morning, and and, and I come across this particular scripture in Isaiah 33, verse 5, where it says, The Lord is exalted. He dwells on high. He's going to fill Zion with His justice and righteousness. We read this last week as well. And in verse 6, it says, He will be the sure foundation. God will be the sure foundation for your times. Now, in this time, it doesn't always feel like God is a sure foundation. Sometimes, if we're going to be real, if we're going to be honest, if we're going to be vulnerable, and we're in church, come on, like this is... If, we, if we're going to be honest anywhere, like this ought to be the place. It, 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 sometimes I, I question, as I have no doubt that you do as well, like, God, where are you right now? Like, all of that which is going on, like, do you have any idea? Like, are you just taking a nap right now? Like, what, 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 with what seems to be happening, it doesn't seem like you're actually in control. More or less, a foundation, a sure foundation for our times. And just in the last few weeks, I felt impressed like God's been bringing this scripture up to me again. Jordan, I'm the sure foundation for your times. Just kept coming up over and over and over again in such a way that I felt encouraged last week to share that with, with us as a community. There's some things that I believe that God's just speaking directly to me and He's not intending to share it with others. It's God speaking to me. There's things that God speaks directly to you and He doesn't mean for you to share that with others. Uh, but then there's other things that God speaks to us and He's like, no, I want you to share it. I want you to encourage others with this as well. And this is one of those things for me. And I begin to ask the Lord, if you're my firm foundation, if you're, if you're our solid rock, as a church, God, what's next? Because I've kind of been like, what do we do? I've, just to be honest, and I hope this doesn't give you calls to not want to be a part of Ethos anymore, but, but I, I, I often I wonder, I'm like, God, I don't really know what we're supposed to be doing right now. Like, I don't really know which direction we're supposed to be going. And, and I want to, because I believe that you've you, you, you've called us as a community to accomplish a specific vision, but I'm not always sure how to, to do that. And I just felt really strong like God was speaking to me this one word, belonging. Just kept coming up over and over and over again. Belonging, belonging, belonging. And I just kept praying that through, and eventually I, I kind of realized what it was that God was, I felt like God was saying. You know, from March 8th all the way until now, we have been online I've been online only. And we've done community groups and we try to create some spaces intentionally where people can still connect face to face while remaining physically distanced. But after a lot of prayer and speaking with our leadership team here at Ethos and our overseers who are outside of our church and as well as several other pastors and friends within our own city who have already been going back and, and regathering and just researching best practices for what it looks like to regather in person again. We, we have decided to, to come back, to have a comeback Sunday beginning on December 6th. We're going to begin regathering again at Nationwide Conference Center Sunday, December 6th at 10 a.m. One service, 
one service only, there's going to be a plethora of restrictions. And so it's not going to look identical to the way in which, like we didn't just hit pause, now we're going to unpause and just come back to things exactly as they were. You know that. But, but there's going to be restrictions. I want to kind of temper expectations. And we are taking this extremely seriously. We do not take this decision lightly. You know, over the last seven or eight months, we have tried to be so cognizant of answering the question well of how do we love our neighbor well? What does love require of me? We've been trying to lean into the answer to that question, specifically as it relates to our community here at Ethos, respecting what every other church is doing, but asking the Lord, what do you want us, what do you want us to do? And so we are going to intentionally create a safe, excellent, and intentional environment on Sunday morning. But it's going to be an environment where we connect with God and within community with one another. We're going to experience God and connect relationally with one another. And now we also understand that this isn't going to be for everybody. But for some of you, you need this place of belonging right now. In fact, you have friends who need this place of belonging right now. Like Sunday mornings at Ethos are going to look different, yet the spirit of the morning is still going to be the exact same. Masks will be required the entire time. We're going to be socially distanced. We're, we're working on kids' ministry opportunities and what that looks like right now. We're going to get all that information to you shortly. So just hang tight. We're, we, are, we are really working hard on this. We, we, are, we, we are taking this unbelievably seriously. But, but I want to answer this one question. Why regather now? Numbers seem to be spiking all across the country. So Jordan, why we gather now? You, you've slow played this thing. We've been intentionally taking, playing the long game on this. So why are we regathering now? I want to give you one, one reason. It's just to create an additional space of belonging. We're going to continue to do online. We're going to live stream our services every Sunday morning. We're going to continue to do community groups because I've spoken with some of you who your groups, you, you love your group, and I love that groups have gone so well. I think this is the best group season we've ever had. I love my group so much. Like I genuinely look forward to Sunday mornings and just hanging out. And in some ways, I just look forward to hanging out and not preaching, like just hanging out with my friends. And so it's been so healthy for me and my family as well. And for others of you, though, you, you want to remain in a community group right now during this season because that's where you feel most comfortable. That's where you feel like you belong. That's the key word. And we want that. We want to create environments where everybody feels like they can belong. People need it. I see it. I hear it personally. I have this amazing privilege of speaking and sitting down and sharing coffee and meals with so many, so many people, so many of you. And it's breaking my heart right now, the spiritual just atrophy that people are experiencing. There's just the disengagement. And there's some people that just won't engage in a community group. They won't engage online. They're burnt out by those things, but they want to regather. They want to experience that manifested presence of God again. They, they want to experience face-to-face -face community again. They don't have that space to do so, and this is going to be that. And so again, it's, it's online, it's community groups, and it's in person. This is all a part of our legacy. Our legacy as a community is to continue to create spaces, eventually all across our city, where people can belong. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, Peter writes, show proper respect to everyone. You know, I actually looked up that Greek word for everyone, and you know what it meant? Everyone. Like, to actually show respect to. No exclusions. Everybody. Like, respect, though, today has become like an endangered value, right? Like, I mean, we just don't see much of it anymore. I mean, my gosh, whether it's, whether it's, whether it's with politics, whether it's about masks, whether it's about uh, racial and social injustice, whether it's about... Uh, coronavirus, wh whatever it may be, like there's just not a whole lot of respect that people have, but that will not be said of us here at Ethos. No, 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 we are going to remain committed to unity and showing honor and respect to all human beings. Why? Because God created all human beings in His image and He loves them all equally. And so as a result, we're going to show respect as well. And so real quick, four reasons why I've identified, as I've listened to you and heard stories of people and spoke personally firsthand with people as it relates to this topic, there's a couple of reasons why people won't regather or why you may even disagree about regathering. I want to identify them because I think by identifying them individually, we can kind of neutralize that and as a result, not necessarily feel a disrespect towards somebody who may feel one way or the other, but strong extroverts, number one, and strong introverts are just going to disagree about this <laughs> because it's a personality thing. And that's, and I, man, we respect that. I am a strong extrovert. And so this season has been very, very, very challenging for me. 
on the Myers-Briggs, I scored 91% extrovert. And Fritz is here, and I have no doubt that Fritz is the exact same way. He's probably 100% extrovert. Well, my wife would be the exact opposite of that. And so we've, we just had to go about this and recognize that God is still wanting to embrace your individual unique personalities and create experiences where you can still feel like you belong. The second reason is because different people just have different sources of authority on the coronavirus itself. And as a result, it's created a whole lot of division, but no, no, it doesn't need to. Like we can actually, re- we can actually disagree with somebody and we still respect them. In fact, I, w- I would encourage you to go back and listen to a message that we called Peacekeepers or Peacemakers. It was back in the, in the summertime we addressed some of those issues. Number three, because age and health factors, you know, they just create divergent opinions. And that's, that's okay as well. And attitudes towards change affect opinions about regathering as well. And so sometimes some of us just don't like change. And we've gotten kind of comfortable where we're at, and so we're just not ready to regather as a result. And look, we respect all of those things. We're going to be in this together, one family, but meeting and engaging in many, many different rooms, all the while building a legacy together because we are legacy people. Yeah. So we, we are. And a legacy person embodies three things. And this is really what I want to make sure that we lean into in this moment. Legacy people, first and foremost, legacy people have an eternal mindset. Now, we've been speaking about this over the last four weeks, so you, you, you kind of get this if you've been leading in, but it, if, if maybe you're newer right now, see, legacy people see this life through the, ends, through the lens of eternity. They recognize that this life isn't just delegated and relegated to just this life. That, that again, that the, the death is really just a doorway into forever, into eternity. What we do here really matters as far as how we experience forever. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, Paul says, so we fix our eyes, not on what's seen, not just on what we see here, not just on the climate and the culture of our country, of our city, of our family, of our specific community, but, but we fix our eyes on what is not seen, on the unseen, on the spiritual world, on what God sees. That's why we can have hope for the future, because we don't just place our faith and our hope in that which we can see right here with our visible eye, because what we see right here with our visible eye isn't forever. It's not eternal. And since, since, so, so we fix our eyes on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is, is eternal. The second thing that legacy people do is Legacy people understand sacrifice. They understand sacrifice. See, nobody really makes a difference without giving something up. And that's really hard for us to understand right now. We, we've been trying to teach our, our daughter the best that, we, best that we can that true love isn't actually love unless it requires something personally of you. Unless it kind of requires, like, sacrifice. Unless it kind of, you know hurts a little bit like you're like oh, I don't really want to do this that's real love in fact matter of fact the Bible actually says like if you love somebody who's nice to you what is that like we're actually called to love our enemy if you can love somebody who don't like you that's actually a regenerated form of love a love that only God through his Holy Spirit can give to us to give to others see, see legacy people choose to do less for themselves so that they can do more for others. I want to say it like this because this is how I feel like it's been speaking personally to me. I've been trying to redefine success in my life. In fact, I've been journaling recently and kind of in preparation for a future series of talks that we're going to be, going to be doing. But, but, I, but I wrote this down recently and I, and I, and I felt, like it was, felt like it was necessary to share right here. But, but I, what, what, if, what if success is determined by what you're willing to give up? In fact, what if success is determined by what you're willing to give up so that others can know Jesus and be connected in community? See, sometimes we have to make a sacrifice personally so that we can help others connect to the one true God through the truth that we know, through the grace that we've experienced. We don't always like to do that. Sometimes it's a sacrifice with our time. Sometimes it's a sacrifice with our finances. Sometimes it's a sacrifice with our talent. We have to serve people in a way that only we can serve because God's gifted you with some sort of capacity to serve in some unique way. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, we read this last week, but Jesus is teaching, he said, don't store up just treasures on earth, store up treasures in heaven. Like recognize that there is an eternal reward. And we reference how, what does that look like practically to store up treasures in heaven? I heard an old time preacher once say, I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Like, you can't take some things with you. 
right? We're not trying to just store up treasures here. We're going to store up treasures in eternity because our legacy is really going to be determined by what we're willing to give up. What are we willing to sacrifice? And lastly, legacy people, they have a sense of urgency. It's just a, something about them that's like, I don't want to wait for tomorrow to do what I can do today. It's going to impact the kingdom of God forever. They make the most of every day. Too many people live with a someday I will mentality. Someday I'll get to that. You know, like, I mean, we do this in our home with projects. We tell our wives, yeah, I'll get to that, right? But, but, but in those things, I mean, they matter. Not really. But, but I'm talking about the things that really matter. Like, oh, someday I'll start serving my neighbor. Someday I'll love them. Someday I'll reach out to them. Someday I'll invite my coworker to grab coffee with my wife and I so we can hear their story and maybe eventually they would want to hear ours as well. Like, someday I'll, someday I'll do that. Someday I'll have them over to my home. Someday I'll create space. Someday I'll begin to give. Someday I'll create. What if we had a mm, today mentality? Not a someday, but a today. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says in verse 15, be careful Careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. What's Paul saying there? Make a difference. He, he's saying, make, just come on, make a difference. That's what our legacy offering is all about because we dream of a church. In fact, I really believe we're living in the dream of the church. Like, like we, 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 you all are so generous. Even through this COVID season, in the beginning, uh, we were talking with our team. We we're like, who knows what's going to happen financially right now? Like we, but you, you just continue to relentlessly give week over week and month over month. And as a result of your giving and your continued generosity, you've actually accelerated the vision to make a difference in our community. Like your giving sets the speed of the vision. It really does. Because the more that you continue to give, the more that we've just said, let's just keep doing like, there's a new church that's planning. Let's give to that new church in our own city. There's a new mission that's just struggling financially right now. Let's give to that mission. Let's create more opportunity. Let's, let's go above and beyond what we would normally do because ethos just keeps being generous. And our legacy offering is no different. This is above and beyond. We're saying, I'm going to give my best. God, I want to I do more than what's asked of me. God, I want to give you even greater. Like, there's just... It, whatever number God puts in your heart, you, you're just called to be obedient to that. But I would encourage us all to be like, God, I, I want to honor you with this. I, I, I do. I'm going to close with this in Psalm 112, verse 5 and 6. The psalmist writes, Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice or with integrity, with character. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They're going to be remembered forever. That's legacy. I pray that we would always be a church that's not defined by what we get, but a church that's defined by what we give. We often ask ourselves this question, like if we just disappeared tomorrow, would anybody really care? Like if ethos just fell off the map right now, would anybody feel like, oh, our city isn't any better? Like, no, we want to be that type of community that's like, we need those people. Like they, those people make our neighborhoods better. They make our school systems. They, they just, they, they make it better. And so that's, that's, how we're, that's what the legacy offering is all about. That's how we're doing this. But even individually in your own life, we apply these principles in our own home. But, but, but as, we, as we do this, man, we can make a massive difference. We're giving to Young Life. That's one of the organizations because we believe in Young Life so much. We've got a bunch of Young Life folks who, who come to Ethos and massive shout out to, to Grady and Taylor Dalzell, good friends of ours who... who who lead a portion of Young Life, a massive portion here in our own city. And we just, we believe in equipping Young Life to continue to fulfill the vision. Because look, what we're not trying to do is replace organizations that are already doing great things in our city. We want to partner with them. That's what, I think that's what healthy, I really believe that's what healthy churches do. And so we're partnering with Young Life. We're partnering with Starhouse Columbus. They are, they, they, they specifically, they house homeless teenage uh, uh, boys in our city, which is a, there's a huge Huge need for that. And they need greater finances so that their vision can be accelerated. We're going to partner with the Dream Center Learning Extension Sites. Dream Center is actually partnered with Columbus City Schools to create learning extension sites so that the online learning atmospheres can actually be done in classrooms with qualified teachers, socially distanced, all of it's in safe environment. But we're going to, we're going to partner with them so they can continue to do that work and continue to, get, to, to, to have excellent supplies readily available for 
for that student, growing student population. We're going to partner with Adventure Church. They're building, they're in the process of, of getting ready to break ground on a building just north from us. Adventure Church, we love them. Kyle Hammond's the pastor up there. We believe in all the local churches in our city. We want to partner with them. And we don't have a building. And so in some ways, this is like a seed into a future building that, that, that the Lord would bless us with. But, but, but until that time, we're, we're just going to keep, we want to bless, come on, we want to bless churches. We're not in competition with other churches. We're, in, we're on the same team. Come on, so, like, that's, like, let's get the mentality out of our head that there are competition. If they go there, no, no, we're all, we're, we're actually all a part of the exact same body. And if you cut my hand off, you know what? I'd miss my hand a whole lot. And sometimes we do that with other churches. We start like bashing other churches. You're like, no, don't bash them. They, they are a crucial part of what God's doing in our kingdom. I hate when I hear people talk bad about other churches. I don't care if their theology is different than yours or ours or anybody's for that matter. If they love Jesus, we love them. Like end of story, right? Like, and, then, and then here's some new ones. But, but just this past week, my wife and I, I'm closing right here, but just this past week, my wife and I were able to be a part of a uh, of the church planning network that we planted through called The Ark, the Association of Related Churches. And they asked Courtney and I to, to, to help coach new church planners. So we were da- down hanging out with them, dang hanging out with them. We were down in Alabama training these new church pastors, church leaders, church planners that are all going to be planning in 2021. It was so much fun. And, and we partner with The Ark monthly. In fact, just this past year, just since January 1st, we've given over 29000 $29,150 away to new church plants, whether through the ark or firsthand to other churches, brand new church plants, some of which are in our own city, some of which are in other states, because we believe in church, but we believe in the local church, the hope of the world right there. And so we're partnering, but there was one particular church that is going to be planning in Indiana that when we left, Court and I were like, we need to personally help them in a big way. Like we just, both of us, she literally wrote on a note. And she's like, because we were in the middle of a session, she kind of leaned it over and she's like, do you feel like we're supposed to help them financially like big time? And I, and I just shook my head. Yes, we are. And so we're going to do that. And, and so we're, we're adding them to this list. And then, of course, every time that we do a legacy offering, we always set some aside for people within our own community to assist them during the holiday season with their kids or just them personally with, with bills or presents or food or whatever it may be. So we're going to set some aside for that. But, but, but we want you to know where those where those dollars that you're going to be giving are going to. And I'm going to close with this thought right here. What if we lived with this mentality? That today, I will live as if this is the day that will be remembered forever. There are certain days in our lives that when you pass away, those who are closest in relationship to you will remember forever. What if every single day we we lived with that I'm going to make today, I'm going to live in such a way that today, if today was the day that I would be remembered forever, what is it that I would be remembered for? Let's be that. Let's be that type of church. I'm excited. If you, if you, if you haven't given, if you want to give, you can give online now. We've been, we, we, some, many of you have already been giving throughout the, this week. And, 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 and if, but if you want to give, we're going to put up right now on the screen somewhere, you'll see you can text to give, you can, you can, you can write a, a, a check out if, if you want, whatever. Actually, don't write a check. We're not going to get the check in time. No, if you do, actually, here, you have my word. If you write a check and you're on the memo line, you put legacy, we'll make sure that still goes to our, our legacy offer. Just get it to us this week. But you don't have to earmark your giving because everything that comes in, whether you give towards our Serve Columbus or, or our, just our general offering, it's all going to legacy right now. So it's not a special line item that you got to give towards but but you, you see your options there on the screen and uh, and then we're going to make a difference together let me pray for you heavenly father thank you so much for this church my god i love these people and we love you and we want to make a difference so we ask right now that you would stretch the dollars that we give so they would go even further supernaturally god take the loaves and the fish do more with them than what we could do all in of ourselves if you're watching you're hanging out with us right now and you don't personally know jesus that's the first step to become a legacy person, really, is to know Jesus personally, to have a real relationship with Him. What we believe that God is for you. He is madly and passionately in love with you. He's crazy about you, really. And He wants you to know Him personally. But the step that you need to take in order to know God personally is to place your faith and your trust 
in Jesus. If you're not really sure what that means, but something about that resonates with you, or you do know what that means, either way, we want to go to our website, ethosoh.com, and click on the connection card, or to simply text ethos yes to 94000, 94000, ethos yes, one word, and we're going to get some information to you. We're going to follow up with you so that you can know what it looks like to become a legacy person, have a relationship with Jesus Christ personally. Ethos, we love you so much. We'll see you out at the food truck drop-in in just a couple hours. Hey Ethos, my name is Lane and we just wanna say thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time checking us out, welcome. We wanna say thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. We wanna connect with you, so you can go to our website and fill out the connection card, or even easier, you can text Ethos New to 94000 and connect with us that way. And just by filling out that card or texting, you're making a difference right here in our community. We're donating $5 on your behalf to an amazing local organization called She Has a Name. They are an organization fighting sex trafficking right here in Columbus. All right, so don't forget that today is our food truck drop-in. Join us from 1 to 3 p.m. out on our land off Africa Road. So come, just drop in for some food on us from some amazing local food trucks. We cannot wait to hang out with all of you. As we're gearing up to begin meeting in person, we wanna help you learn more about the gifts and talents in you and how you can get plugged in with serving on one of our amazing teams. Mark your calendar for November 8th from 5 to 6 p.m. because that is our next Ethos 101. You can get registered on the events page on our website. As we continue to love our city generously, there's a couple ways you can give. And if you're new to checking us out, there's zero pressure to give. But if you need some options on how to give, one option is text to give. All you have to do is just text the number that's right there on the screen with how much you want to give. It's simple, easy, and secure. Or you can head over to our website and give there as well, just by clicking the giving link. Thank you again for hanging out with us today. We truly hope that you were able to connect with the teaching and that you felt encouraged. Remember to grab those discussion questions that will show on the screen in just a moment and lean into them during this week. We love you, Ethos, and we are in this together.